Gasmon sale chính hãng giữa tháng mua ngay. Azada. Kem xả đô một phút siêu dưỡng. Sử dụng kem xả đô trong một phút bằng một lần chăm sóc tóc chuyên sâu. Mua ngay tại Shopee.
class, who would like to do problem three on the board? Please don't be me, please don't be me. I know, Miss Einstein. Let's give someone...
ơi chị tắt giùm em đi chị Tùng Tùng ơi Ok em ok Good evening those who are in Melbourne. Good evening Professor Gary Kennedy. Good evening. Uh, can you talk? Yeah, just just yes. yeah, I think you should be able to, right? So let me stop yes. by you for now. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I hear you Good. beautifully. Uh, oh, thank you. All right, okay. Uh, now um so yes, all right. So now, um, for those who probably <laughs> doesn't know me, um, my name is Duke. I'm working uh, at RMIT University. So the um, I met Professor uh, Gary Kennedy in, um, I think in year 2016, when I came back Melbourne around Easter. So it's about, let's see how many years now, eight years, <laughs> almost eight years now, Gary. Um, it is uh, my pleasure to know you, and it is also my my honor to have you here um, in the Zoom of Knowledge Bridge, uh, the Vietnamese uh, academic community that we have built together uh, with the visions that uh, to promote the research culture uh, for young academic in Vietnam. All right. Um, so for us, you are the giant. Right, and I hope that I am able to put my friends here, the young academic friends here, in your shoulder, right? And then one day they can build up their career and they can become, you know, uh, a giant themselves. I wish, right? So we 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 can develop. So that is the the vision that I have with the Knowledge Bridge Research Community, right? So thank you for spending your time with us. We're looking forward to hear from you for the very interesting topic, right? We are now, today is 14th of April, 2022, right? I remember when I studied accounting uh, in year 1995 in, for bachelor degree in Vietnam, uh, the teacher told me accounting is a language of business. So let's see, you know, in 30 years after, what should be the definition of accounting? All right, so it's over to you now. Um, we have here um, a few volunteers would be willing to help you anything, right? Just before you stop, one minute, Gary. For those of my Vietnamese friends, I will speak in Vietnamese. I guide them how to, um, how to use, uh, you know, how to use the interpretation function first before you start. Yeah, just give me one yes. minute. I speak in Vietnamese. Ah, uh, các bạn ơi. Bây giờ những bạn nào mà cần phải nghe tiếng Việt á, các bạn giơ tay trên khung chat giùm Đức được không? Giơ cái reaction á để Đức xem coi là bao nhiêu bạn. À, rồi những bạn nào mà cần phải nghe tiếng Việt á thì các bạn sẽ à, làm theo hướng dẫn của Đức nha. Ở nhìn trên cái màn hình cái menu của mình á ở ở dưới cuối á nó có cái hình quả địa cầu. Ở địa cầu nó để chữ interpretation. Thì các bạn nhấn vào cái chữ interpretation đó thì các bạn sẽ hiện ra nó có ba cái là nó có là off English or Vietnamese chọn VI Vietnamese là các bạn sẽ nghe đội phiên dịch của đại học RMIT đó là bạn Lê Văn Khoa, bạn Minh Hằng Trần với và thêm sự bổ trợ hỗ trợ trong khung chat của bạn My nữa, bạn My Nguyễn rồi à, bạn nào mà chưa nghe được tiếng Việt á khi các bạn chuyển qua thì các bạn nghe tiếng Việt thì các bạn sẽ không nghe được tiếng Anh rõ mà chỉ nghe khoảng 20% Thì nếu các bạn muốn nghe lại tiếng Anh thì các bạn cũng nhấn vào cái chữ hình quả địa cầu và các bạn chọn English, I-E-N, cái hình quả địa cầu Interpretation thì các bạn sẽ nghe được nha. Rồi bây giờ để Đức xem coi. À, rồi nếu như mà các bạn có gặp khó khăn gì á, thì trong màn hình á, có những cái bạn gọi là cầu host thì các bạn có thể nhắn tin riêng cho những bạn đó để xin hỗ trợ nha. À, nhắn tin cho Đức cũng được. Rồi, dạ, yeah, I... I done my <laughs> I done my explanation um, right how to let I see if I'm able to turn on the caption uh, right aside participant to type I will type use a third party I'm not sure right okay yeah all right now the floor is yours thank you well thank you Duke and could I just ask before I begin uh, talking 
uh, yes. about my PowerPoint. Do you have that ready to go? Uh, yes. Now I see if I have a volunteer to I assign the job, that job. So let I oh, see good. if she's here. Um, bạn Nguyễn Trà Mi, Mi ơi em, Mi ơi em vô chưa? Nếu mà chưa thôi Hằng làm giúp chị đi, chị không thấy Mi rồi. Dạ vâng, chị có nghe thấy em không ạ? Em là bạn nào vậy? Hằng hả? Hằng Trần ạ. Dạ vâng, thế em Rồi, rồi, nha. rồi. Yeah, rồi. Yes. Yeah. So Hằng, um, Hằng, you, you probably know her already. She, Hằng is our PhD student in yes. RMIT Melbourne. So Hằng will be uh, yeah, running the slide for you. And okay. we have, we have converted it into our template. Oh, that's very nice. Yes, well, right. um, well, as you can all see, I'm just as young as I was uh, when that photo was taken. But uh, seriously, I'd like to um, uh, thank Duke and Knowledge Bridge for this invitation uh, to be here uh, this evening and, and this afternoon in Vietnam and this morning in Portugal and other parts of Europe. It's a pleasure uh, to be here. I, I like the idea of speaking to the next generation of academic leaders in the world. I think that's a great thing to do, a great opportunity to have. And uh, I'm ready to talk to you today on uh, it's 2022, what is accounting today? But um, I know this is uh, primarily a research community. Uh, uh, this idea is about research, training, education, uh, discussion and the like. But I would like to say that this topic fits in at the top end of thinking about research in accounting. And this may or may not have occurred to you, but if you don't know what accounting is, then what are you teaching? And what are you researching? And so I'd like you to, I'd like to challenge all of you to think about that as this presentation is going on. Uh, because I'll tell you up front, I think the current definitions we use in accounting are seriously flawed for accounting in 2022, for the world in which we live, where there are many massive questions or huge big questions and many wicked problems, including super wicked problems like climate change. And I'll make it clear up front that I don't think accounting is reaching its full potential. So I've, I've given you that short introduction to, to put it into the bigger picture of um, why is this important? It's because if you don't know what the definition of accounting is, then I'm not sure what you're teaching to your students and I'm not sure what you're researching. So if we could go to the next PowerPoint, thank you. Okay, now what is accounting today? I, I imagine that many of you have given this some thought uh, before coming here for this webinar, or perhaps while you're sitting there waiting for others to join. And seriously, if you were sitting in a, in a restaurant tonight in um, Vietnam or anywhere in the world, and you're talking to a couple of friends and you're talking about accounting, and the waiter come up to you and said, oh, excuse me, what is accounting? I've heard about accounting, what is it? Now you might be thinking I'm joking, but uh, these sort of things do happen. So what would you say? There you are, you're out socially talking to friends, you're all accountants will assume. Uh, so how would you answer the question? Uh, would you try to find a textbook in your bag or in your backpack and open it up and look at the index and uh, find definition? Or would you uh, just know it anyway, uh, based on something you might teach? Or would you explain it in your own words? In which case everyone attending tonight may explain accounting quite differently. So I leave that thought with you, but we're really talking about the core essence of the word or the subject. What is it? Why are we clustered around this webinar, looking at our screens tonight, 
Why are we doing this? Well, I think it's important. Our next PowerPoint, please. Uh, yes, next one. All right, so it's a critical question. The question is, what is accounting in 2022? And the definitions we tend to use date back to at least the 1940s. Now, I don't know how many people attending tonight, uh, maybe 82, 82 years of age. Uh, I'm not asking anyone to put up their hands, but I would be a little bit surprised if anyone attending tonight was at least 82 years of age. It's a long time ago. It is a long time ago. So why would we still be using definitions of accounting that date back to at least the 1940s? Why? And the answer to this question is really important because as I said earlier, it's what we think is accounting is what we teach our students in the subject of accounting and what we do research in when we're an accounting academic. And one thing I will say to you, before I said that you will be the future leaders of the accounting profession in the world, and I mean uh, possibly the academic accounting profession, uh, we need to realise that our students today, uh, whether they're undergrad or postgraduates, will be tomorrow's future leaders of the profession, but probably much more in the area of professional practice. Next PowerPoint, please. Now, I'd like to go uh, straight to a definition and then uh, introduce it uh, a little more carefully in the following PowerPoints. But in early 2022, what do we believe is an informative, relevant and meaningful definition of accounting? And this is what has been proposed by three authors, uh, Lee Parker, Eva Sahurdidu and myself. And this uh, article appeared in the Australian Accounting Review. It was published officially on the 22nd of November, 2020 and uh, found its way into the first uh, issue of the journal for 2021. And this definition has also had some uh, exposure in an IFAC Knowledge Gateway uh, series, which is a thought leadership series of IFAC. So it has been given some uh, attention uh, by IFAC, uh, which uh, is quite pleasing. So accounting is, and I'll read this version, Accounting is a technical, social and moral practice concerned with the sustainable utilisation of resources and proper accountability to stakeholders to enable the flourishing of organisations, people and nature. Now, I can't see too many of your faces at the moment. I'm really just primarily looking at Dook. So it's good to see your face, Duke, but I can't tell what your reaction was uh, to that definition. But uh, you may need a little more information. And so that's now forthcoming. And we'll go to the next PowerPoint. Okay, so here it is. And... Uh, Today is not the 7th of April, by the way. Uh, that's just to uh, see who's watching and tuning in. Uh, it's the 14th of April. And on the 14th of April, uh, I'm going to talk about accounting as comprising technical practice, social practice, and moral practice. But I believe quite uh, firmly that accounting is uh, much more than an ensemble or a collection of techniques concepts and procedures. In other words, it's more than doing things. It is not a technical practice alone. It is beyond a purely instrumental or technical pursuit. Now, I'm not going to focus much time on talking about accounting as technical practice because I think you know what I mean. I think even in Vietnam, 
accounting tends to be, if not is, taught primarily as a technical practice. Uh, we go through a lot of techniques, uh, procedures, accounting standards, uh, other rules, and we try to tell the students uh, how to do accounting. And we think that's an education in accounting. Well, it's a partial education in accounting. It's not a full and it's not a comprehensive education in accounting. Now, having made these statements, you can disagree with anything you like. You're a free agent, each one of you. I'm just giving you my view and I ask you just to think about it. And accounting is a social practice. Why? Well, how come? Well, when you think about it, it underlies and enables organisational action and human activity. It guides and influences our behaviours. That's our behaviour and everyone who's not attending this webinar. It, it um, influences organisational culture in any organisation, any entity, such as universities, such as public universities in Vietnam, and so on. And accounting is associated with ordering our lives. Accounting is a key instrument of ordering us, we who are listening tonight, such as by means of KPIs or metrics. And I think in universities, uh, we know a lot about KPIs and metrics, not just because we're accountants, but our universities have become very seriously interested in KPI type uh, performance indicators and very serious about global university rankings, which I imagine would be uh, the case in Vietnam as well as other parts of the world. So accounting is something that enables action or it disables action through targets. So when you think about KPIs, I want you to think about trillions of KPIs in the world. You can't see any of them, but they're floating in the atmosphere. They're everywhere around you. They're at football ovals, they're on the bus, they're in shops, shopping centres, they're in the streets, they're guiding traffic, they're guiding the running of trains, and so on. KPIs are everywhere. There are more KPIs in the world than anything else. And this is how the world is run. And when you think about the importance of accounting, accounting is incredibly important because accountants and accounting is the area where KPIs are undertaken. This makes accountants very influential. And accounting is also a moral practice, a practice whose actions and inactions influence others now and in future and help shape the moral order of organisations and society. So in other words, accounting is not just a technical practice. It's not just a technical and social practice. It's a technical, social and moral practice, according to this definition. So the next PowerPoint, please. OK, now, conceptions of accounting. I'm talking about now accounting as a social practice, and this is what we know today. Our conceptions of accounting have broadened considerably over the past uh, 40 to 45 years, uh, which is a period I, I understand uh, being in, in the accounting profession uh, since those days. As the impacts of accounting in the world, the effects of accounting have been subject to greater attention by contemporary and historical accounting researchers since the early to mid 1980s. And you have probably heard of the, the following journals. I'll mention a few, but we have Accounting Organisations and Society, 
critical perspectives on accounting, accounting auditing and accountability journal, financial accountability and management, um, accounting history. There are a whole lot of journals that are publishing in what I call the sociological, critical and interpretive tradition. And it's these uh, traditions of research where we try to understand the effects of accounting because accounting is not just a technical thing, it influences human behavior. It influences our behavior. We here today, we are influenced by accounting, which means it influences our behavior, which is why it's very important to use theories in studying accounting. Uh, such as social and political theories, uh, theories from uh, political science, um, sociology, and so on. Because there are people in the world concerned with why are we like we are? Why, why have we got this? Why have we got that? And so people are trying to understand how things influence our behaviour in the world, and accounting is one of them. Accounting is one and seemingly become becoming more or increasingly important. So accounting uh, has increasingly become an object of study less as technical practice, but rather as a pervasive, which it is. It's pervasive, it's enabling, it's disabling <clears throat> social phenomenon. And this allows us to call accounting a social practice. And uh, a few months back, I was giving a webinar like this and someone in the audience, a professor from another discipline, uh, not accounting, uh, she wrote a message in saying, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to identify and understand the effects of accounting in the world. And since that time, that question appears in these PowerPoints. What are the effects of accounting in the world? Now, as uh, academics, uh, mainly in Vietnam, have any of your students actually ever asked you, what are the effects of accounting in the world? Or have you, as a lecturer, asked a question to your students? What are the effects of accounting in the world? Now, if there's nothing happening like that, this is one reason why the definitions of accounting we use are not working. So accounting is increasingly recognised for its effects on and reflections of people's behaviours, our behaviours, and their actions, our actions in both organizations and society with ramifications for organizational and social functioning and development. Now, I just wanna give you one example of accounting as a social practice. So if we move to the next PowerPoint, thank you. And this is a, a case study uh, on the National Library of New Zealand the NLNZ. It was opened in 1920 as the Alexander Turnbull Library. And the library was required by the government, the federal or the national government in New Zealand, to place a financial valuation or a monetary valuation on its museum collections for financial reporting purposes. And the library didn't want to do this. They didn't have any idea of how to do this. Anyway, they, were, they had to do this and they, the valuation that they came up with was 522 New Zealand uh, million dollars. And that was as at the 30th of June, 1994. Now don't worry about the date because the sort of thing I'm talking about here could happen at any time, including tomorrow in Vietnam. And it could happen anywhere in the world, including in Portugal or Italy or Australia. 
So the library come up with this financial valuation and put it in the statement of financial position. However, the New Zealand government had a bigger plan and they introduced a capital charge per annum of almost 10% on the reported assets of government departments. Now, bad luck for the National Library of New Zealand because it's a government department. That is unlucky, isn't it, when you think about it? And so the New Zealand government said, well, you have to pay this charge. And they all said, but, 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 but we, we haven't got any money. We can't, we just haven't got it. And they said, oh, we'll just sell things. You know, you've got a lot of stuff here. You don't use, you've got books in warehouses all over New Zealand. Uh, you don't use them. Uh, what's the point of having them? Uh, just get rid of them. And uh, the library had a serious proposal to sell the Milton collection of the National Library of New Zealand. A very major collection. Until this hit, hit the press, it became a controversy in the media. And after many complaints, it was decided, well, uh, look, this is a bit of a problem. Uh, after all, the, the custodians of these collections, they don't really have the power to trade in these collections, so they, they can't be held accountable for the financial valuations of collections. You know, a, a collection is a collection. When you're collecting something, you don't collect one thing and sell it to another person. Uh, you collect because you're collecting. You're adding to your collection all the time. So it was decided to solve this problem with the use of a journal entry only. And that was to remove the asset from the National Library of New Zealand and put it into the accounts of the national government or the crown, if you like, but the national government in New Zealand. So the asset was just simply taken out of the books of the National Library of New Zealand. Oh, bingo. The capital charge didn't have to be paid. Now, you all know as well as I do that 10% of 522 million is 52.2 million per annum. How long would you have a National Library of New Zealand if the library had to pay 52.2 million per annum as a capital charge? We wouldn't have a National Library of New Zealand. This is accounting as a social practice. I can't think of a better example to give to you about this. And as I said, this could happen in Vietnam tomorrow. If the government in Vietnam decided to do a, a similar thing to what the New Zealand government wanted to do, adopt full accrual accounting, put all sorts of things in the accounts and then say, okay, here's your annual capital charge. I think that's more about the destruction of the public sector and not the preservation, conservation and growth and development of the public sector. So the next PowerPoint, I wanna talk about accounting as uh, moral practice. And what do we know today? Well, I wanna emphasize this, but accounting is not independent of or disconnected from morality. Indeed, morality is at accounting's core which we have envisaged through auditing and, ass and assurance, but much more than that, which is why we talk about the jurisdiction of professional accounting or the jurisdiction of professional accounting and auditing. Sometimes we drop off the word auditing, but I don't mind if you leave it there. It's a very important part of the accounting profession. And I would say to you that if it wasn't for auditing, which existed at the time, uh, share markets were established around the world in many countries, such as uh, US and UK and, uh, and so on. I would argue that we may not have stock markets because who would, who would trust accounts produced by entrepreneurial people who you don't know, you've never met? Who would trust unaudited accounts in the world? Would you invest uh, 
you know, uh, your house into a, a company that wasn't audited, even if it was listed on a stock exchange. So when you think about auditing, it's pretty important. To me, it helped to bring about stock markets in the world and it still helps to keep them operating as we know them today. Because people tend to trust audited accounts. Now, what are the ingredients of morality? Well, there's external audit. We know there's internal audit. We know there are things called audit committees. We know there, are, there is something called the Code of Ethics for Professional Accountants issued by one of the bodies uh, of IFAC, which is known as APES 110 in Australia. And we know there are boards of directors in the world, including independent directors that are trying to make sure the company is operated on the right footing. It's, it's operated appropriately. It's not dodgy. It's not doing illegal or unethical things. And directors, as part of their duties, have to be sure that the CEO and the CFO and other senior executives are acting appropriately. So we want, and I hope in Vietnam this happens, we want accounting students to understand the full dimensions of accounting. We want our students to appreciate how morality is central to the practice of accounting. Accounting and audit must be, and I emphasize must be trusted by the public. It is not just a technical pursuit. It's not just doing things and putting together numbers. It's a moral practice. So if we go to the next PowerPoint, please, I just want to give you one example of uh, accounting as a moral practice. And this is another uh, museum, if you like, or um, cultural institution, uh, which are, which are profit, non-for-profit organisations, the ones I'm talking about. And importantly, they're public. They're in the public sector. The State Film Centre of Victoria was formed in uh, 1946. It became a leading cultural centre for archiving Australian and international cinematic works. Now, what sort of films are these? These are very old films, ancient or antiquated, uh, just say old films. They might be sepia, black and white. They might have volume or no volume. They might be wrinkly. They might be, you know, looking like they're cracked. Uh, they might be missing parts, but that might be the only copy of this film in the world, or at least in Australia. And so this is a collection of historical artifacts uh, when it was possible to film events, which it wasn't possible to do in uh, 1788 when Captain Cook arrived on a ship and put up a, a flag saying, oh, this is now part of the British Empire. Uh, there wasn't a film for that at that time. Now, I'm saying here a novel financial valuation approach was devised. And some of you might be wondering how you could value things that, you know, there might only be one copy of. Uh, how would you know? But what the uh, State Film Centre did was they determined the length, the actual physical length of each film. So this one might be, you know, uh, three metres. The next one might be 10 metres. The next one might be 50. The next one might be 100. The next one might be 180. And so they said, OK, well, each film is a certain length. So let's work out the total length of all of our films put together. That's, you know, 100 plus 180 plus 150 plus 60 and so on. And then they went and contacted a, um, a supplier, a major supplier of, uh, of films. And it just happened to be Kodak, I, I remember. And they said, oh, excuse me, could you tell me the, the cost of buying a lot of film, uh, you know, to, uh, if we theoretical, theoretically replaced 
the films we had. And I'm talking about film with no image at all, no image, new film, nothing on it. And they said, oh, that's $12 a metre or whatever the price is. And they said, oh, beauty, that's terrific. Now we know the total length of all of our films and we know the cost of replacing film with images on it with film with nothing on it. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, gee, not sure about that. But the auditors were happy. They came along and said, yes, that's, that's terrific. Um, yes, no problem. That's true and fair, whatever the words were, uh, subject to audit. And in the last uh, dot point of this slide, I use my words carefully here. But I think this illuminates a purported lack of morality as it involves misrepresenting the heritage collections held by the State Film Centre of Victoria by a measure which has nothing to do, nothing to do with the heritage resources held. And if that's morality in accounting, then I'm out. If that's the way accountants do their business, I'm not very interested. And so accounting needs to be, must be a moral practice. So the next PowerPoint, please. Okay, now I'm not gonna read this definition again, but I hope that over the last 10 or 12 minutes or so, that when you read this definition again, we'll say now, that it actually can make or does make more sense. So I'm not going to read it, but I, I just want you to read it. And I'm all in favour of all of us doing well in the world. I don't want anyone that's uh, badly off and then there's people that are well off. I'm not that interested in that. I'm, I'm just happy for all of us in the world all of our organisations, all of our people and our nature to flourish. Why can't we do that? We're talking about our own life, our own sustainability, our own ability to uh, live in an increasingly complex and uh, deteriorating world in terms of natural environment. We have to stop that. Accounting can help stop that by changing the definition of accounting. And who is accounting? It's everybody listening tonight. Everybody listening tonight, if they want to, and I encourage you to do it, could start teaching this new definition of accounting from tomorrow. And if all of us did that, including the people I speak to next Friday night and the Friday night after that, then things will change. And we're all helping to make it change. We're all doing something. So I just want to run through this framework uh, for applying this definition of accounting. There are basically, or well, there are three fundamental questions. When we talk about technical practice, really what we're interested in is how to do accounting. I've already mentioned that quite a few times already, but there it is in writing, how to do accounting. And that's what I think accounting academics do fairly well, but that's not enough. I want our future students, our future practitioners to know what does accounting do in the world? If we move to this new accounting standard or if we don't have this accounting standard or if the stock exchange wants this sort of rule, what does that accounting do in the world? What are the impacts? of accounting. What is accounting actually doing as we practice it today to the natural environment? Does the international accounting profession do anything for our natural environment? Anything at all? Some of you might be thinking, oh, I read recently, lucky, lucky. Um, the accounting profession is going to have a new accounting standards board. I would say to you, it's far too late. 
Why is this uh, idea coming forth today? Why didn't it come forward 40 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago? Now, I'm not going to be critical of accounting. It's just that I want it to be appropriately defined so we understand more about what it is and what does accounting do in the world. That should be part of our education of our students. And for, as far as a moral practice goes, the questions to ask here are what should accounting do? What accounting do we need to help preserve the environment, to help stop species of birds and animals and fish becoming extinct? Or what should accounting not do? Why are we doing this accounting? What does this accounting do to our natural environment? And I think one weakness that accounting has is that it is primarily, if not solely concerned with the accounting entity or the reporting entity. In other words, just what uh, transactions affect the entity. But what about the effects of those transactions on the environment, on the public, on our rivers, on our oceans? Who measures the effects of that? Because these are costs of corporations that are passed on, passed on to the public. So if there's a big spillage or if there's oil on the beach in Vietnam, uh, typically, the government has to do something about it. So there are some issues in accounting that give us some, some problems, but we, it doesn't mean they can't be solved. So the next PowerPoint, please. Um, do your students ever ask you, as a lecturer, is accounting achieving its full potential? Or do you ask your students, is accounting achieving its full potential? Or when you go into the staff room at your university and you talk to some of your accounting colleagues, do you ever discuss this issue of whether accounting is achieving its full potential? Now, if not, I'm going to ask you, why not? Why not? What is it about accounting where we don't have to worry about its potential at all? How can accounting get away with this sort of like lack of accountability? Can't accounting improve itself for the sake of organisations, people and nature? because I'm now talking about the effects of accounting and the fact that there are trillions of KPIs in the air all around the world, all around the world, including around you where you sit today, that are impacting on your work, what you do today, what you put off till tomorrow, and that all is impacting on the KPIs you need to meet in terms of uh, teaching and learning and in terms of research and innovation. So what's this idea about accounting for a better world? You know, who says accounting has to worry about that? Well, why shouldn't accounting actually try to help create a better world? Why not? And when we know, have this, it's when accounting is conducted and deployed for the betterment of society and the natural environment, which means for the benefit of all of us, humans and non-humans alike to enable the flourishing of organisations, people and nature. Now, what's wrong with that? I reckon if any of you have children or even grandchildren, that's the sort of thing that you could tell your children or grandchildren and they might feel that that's a good thing. And a better world is one in which we act purposefully to nurture the continuous flourishing of organisations, people and nature. 
Okay, so now we're going to the next PowerPoint. I hope you're all still awake there and uh, tuning in and uh, not, not getting sleepy by any means. Uh, Duke doesn't look sleepy, so that's good. So the next PowerPoint, which is reflection points. Not far off. Okay, well, I'll keep talking, but the next PowerPoint is uh, called Reflection Points. It might be stuck, Duk. Um, so what I'm gonna tell you uh, is what's on my PowerPoint in front of me. And that is that accounting comprises both ends and means. Ends and means. Accounting is not just the means. And in the article in the Australian Accounting Review, published in uh, 2021, uh, we say, the three authors wrote, the means are hyperdeveloped. Hyperdeveloped. How we teach procedures, techniques, it's hyperdeveloped. It's been the main interest of textbooks for decades, if not centuries. But the ends of accounting seem to be under-articulated and indeed hazy, if not very hazy or opaque. So we need to talk more about the ends of accounting. Where is this accounting taking us? We need to know. And I'll add that accounting is to be undertaken with full regard for an adequate understanding of the organizational and social context in which entities operate. I know about uh, uh, Vietnam Airlines, I've flown on, on that airline uh, quite a few times. But why should uh, Air Vietnam uh, adopt precisely the same accounting as, I don't know, the National uh, Art Gallery um, of Vietnam? Why? They're totally different organisations, different missions, different visions, totally different. So why should one accounting system suit all? I think it's called something like accounting sector neutrality. How did we buy that? How did we buy that? The world's not that simple. The world's more complex. However, that's debatable, according to uh, some of you, I'm sure. And I uh, read this article many times uh, a long, long while ago, but Anthony Hopwood, the foundation editor of Accounting Organisations and Society, wrote a piece and the title is on trying to study accounting in the context in which it operates. So if you haven't come across that piece, I do recommend that you get it and have a read of it. Because to be frank, I agree with Anthony Hopwood. That's what all of us, should be doing, and I think all of us need to do that. So my uh, conclusion here is that accounting has indeed yet to reach its full potential. It's not there. And don't forget one other thing. We all gain our sus sustenance and joys from planet Earth. That's what keeps us all going. We breathe the air, the fish swim in the oceans, the koalas go up gum trees. We all have a place, but we need to make sure that planet Earth is sustained. And that includes accountants, including accounting academics, and it includes the International Organised Accounting Profession. Our next PowerPoint, please. Now, I'm going to get really boring, if not boring already. This is going to be boring. I'm telling you now because I'm going to give you a few definitions of accounting that you may or may not teach, or you may or may not teach um, something similar. Uh, this first one, uh, this was uh, set in 1941. 
Uh, the organization at the time was called the American Institute of Accountants, but it's now the American Institute of CPAs, the ASCPA, probably the biggest accounting organization in the world, although it may be getting threatened in that regard by the CICPA. Anyway, this was the definition given to accounting in 1941, and you can go to the internet and key in the terms, what is accounting? And you'll find this definition because I have. This definition is still available, readily available for your students in Vietnam, students in Australia, students in Portugal and students everywhere else. These definitions never die, it seems. They live on. And this is a definition saying, accounting is the art of recording, classifying and summarizing in a significant manner and in terms of money, transactions and events which are at least in part or in part at least of a financial character and interpreting the results thereof. Now, I'm sorry if you dropped off to sleep there. Uh, don't blame me. This is the definition that I'm just reading. It's got nothing to do with me. I would just ban it myself, ban it because it's boring. And I think it's the reason why accountants tend to operate under the stereotype of being sometimes, if not often, dull and boring. This is the sort of stuff we don't need. It doesn't help anybody. And then the American Accounting Association, uh, they came up with this definition in 1966, which is still quite a long time ago. Uh, I think it's something like, uh, I don't know, I can't work it out. It'd be 34 plus 22. It's a long time ago, isn't it? So accounting is the process of identifying, measuring and communicating economic information to permit informed judgments and decisions by users. Well, to me, I don't like this. It says accounting is a process, just a process, nothing more. It doesn't do anything else. Accounting is much more than a process. That's just the doing of accounting. That's just accounting as a technical practice. And so what? Decisions are made. Are they good decisions or, or what? what? What are these decisions? Um, everyone's quite vague on what they are. It seems to me you could produce any information and they could inform decisions. Whether it's relevant, whether it's accurate or not, doesn't seem to matter. So moving on to the next PowerPoint. Thank you. So I decided to go to uh, Wikipedia and you might be thinking, oh, I can't believe that uh, Gary Carnegie's looked at Wikipedia like I didn't think academics used it. What's he doing? Well, I was just looking for something contemporary, something that uh, might have been picking up the, the understanding of everyday people in the world. And this is what I found and I keep checking it before I give these presentations. And it hasn't changed in the last week. It hasn't changed ever since I've been looking. But accounting, also known as accountancy, if you didn't know that, is the measurement, processing and communication of financial and non-financial information about economic entities such as businesses and corporations. Well, that tells me the orientation is about business. It's about the private sector. It's about making money. The world is far more complex than that. Far more complicated than that. But one thing that this definition does introduce is the notion of non-financial information, which I'm happy with because at least there's a change from the others. And some of you might have heard of Craig Deegan. Uh, he was working with me for some time at RMIT. He's now at the University of Tasmania, and he's written this uh, traditional, not traditional, uh, rather special tradition, uh, special and uh, long-standing uh, textbook called Financial Accounting, now in its ninth edition. And Craig's a bit of a thinker, and he says, accounting is the provision of information about aspects of the performance of an entity to a particular group of people with an interest or stake 
in the organisation and we shall call these parties stakeholders. Now, accounting is definitely more than just about performance. We know there's financial position. Uh, we know there's cash. Uh, so it's more than just performance. Um, and it doesn't say just financial information. So I'm happy about that. All right, now I don't think though that does the trick either for me and for uh, the authors of the Australian Accounting Review article. And I just wanna give you uh, an example of something else that I'll get you to look at if you wish in your own time, but the next PowerPoint, um, I'm saying this quite deliberately, but we live in a world of KPIs. It's an era of calculative order. It's an error. We get meaning in the world through calculation. Think about that. It seems the only thing that matters is a calculation. Just have a, have a think about that. Anyway, I've been looking at uh, global university rankings, which are produced from uh, a whole array of KPIs that are calculated. Uh, the thing is that there are very many global university ranking agencies in the world, so the whole field is very messy and complicated. Uh, but there are some major global university rankings. Uh, but I think um, universities are public institutions. They're to act in the public interest for the benefit of society. They're meant to be concerned with answering big questions and solving wicked problems. And in this first article, I discussed micro measurement or macro contributions approach to university management. Micro measurement to me is calculating a whole array of KPIs and macro contribution is looking at the missions, the written missions and vision statements of public universities and finding out why they were set up, what is their purpose and what is their ambition. And these are two different things. And I think the micro measurement approach, which is driven by a need to calculate on the basis of KPIs, is making public universities what they are not. It's made them very competitive. It's moved people away from a system of public universities in a country like Australia and Vietnam to a system of competitors, dog eat dog. And one thing I do know about competition, and I've learned this over the years, is that competition is really aimed at the elimination of competitors. And we know there are um, not a lot of banks in the world. There's four banks in Australia. There's two or three airlines. There's 37 public universities. But if competition becomes rampant in public universities, there will no longer be 37 universities in Australia, I can assure you. So if we just go over now a few more slides uh, to um, uh, this one, which has got summing up on it, I'll just uh, show you summing up. So if you can find that one, that'd be great. So keep going, next one. We'll just whiz through these, next one, next one. Uh, this is it. Okay, now this is an article I wrote with uh, Lee Parker, uh, joint editor, joint uh, founding editor of AAAJ. It's only uh, two sentences, uh, but I want you to think about this. But we write about the transformative or corrupting power of global university rankings, where the only thing that counts for a university is going up, never down, a ranking list of global universities. Because the power of these global university rankings has concerningly stimulated a self-interested corporate culture and dysfunctional behaviours on a scale not previously imagined in higher education. The warnings are clear. Now, this is an example of the effects of accounting, the effects of performance measurement, 
they are the same thing. So in other words, we need to think more about what accounting is doing. So next PowerPoint, please. Uh, towards the redefinition of accounting, well, um, oh, let me see. Uh, please go back one. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry for the confusion there, but accounting is indeed more influential than many people think. And I think accounting academics have to think that as well. Uh, we, the authors of this Australian Accounting Review paper article, uh, we contend that accounting is yet to reach its full potential and a clear and highly relevant game-changing definition can provide the foundation for that achievement. And this is a sentence that I probably state more than any other sentence at all. And this is, accounting is not a mere, uh, sorry, a mere neutral, benign technical practice. I'll say that again. Accounting is not a mere neutral, benign technical practice. If we keep thinking about that as correct, as incorrect, I mean, I'm not sure how accounting can create a better world. So what we say is understanding more fully the nature, roles, uses and impacts, which I've emphasised of accounting, we argued will help to shape a better world that is consistent with a more balanced perspective on people, uh, planet and profit. And so the next slide. And so what I've been encouraging is uh, a discussion and debate on this issue around the world. I've given uh, these presentations in many different countries and sometimes to uh, an international audience. And I've given them quite frequently. And uh, I give more or less the same presentation each time. Uh, but I think we need to discuss this in the world. Uh, it's time for accounting to have a big think. And there are many big questions, or sorry, yeah, big questions to be answered and wicked problems to be solved. Indeed, I think it's better to talk about a climate crisis these days than a climate change. Uh, we all seem to react better to a crisis than to a change. But I've read many times that climate crisis is a super wicked problem. And given someone who was born in Australia and lives in Australia, I can assure you that climate change is real. I've seen it in my own backyard in Australia. I've seen Australia on fire. I've seen Australia underwater. There is a, a thing called climate crisis. Don't ask me who caused it, but I do know one thing. There is no planet B. So accounting's main agenda and its contribution to the social and environmental good can be purposefully extended both in the public and our planet's interests. Now I've actually stopped um, referring to public, public interest alone. I think I could keep just talking about the public interest, but I think it's not strong enough. I think we have to keep saying the public and our planet's interest. We have to get people to keep thinking about the planet. We just can't keep forgetting about it and giving it more and more drama in its life. Uh, the next uh, slide, please. So what we're saying is accounting can and indeed has to be more proactive. And this would mean more interdisciplinary in working collaboratively with other disciplines and get involved. Uh, for example, there's been a recent article published in the Australian Accounting Review uh, by five authors. I'm one of them. And Lee Parker and Eva uh, are two of the other four. Uh, it was published on the 5th of April. So it's available on the Australian Accounting Review website. 
but it's also been put up onto a platform uh, that you've probably heard of called Academia. And there is a discussion going on right now as I speak about accounting as technical, social and moral monetary practice. Uh, sorry, technical, social and moral practice, the monetary valuation of public cultural heritage and scientific collections in financial reports. So for those who wish to click on that link or copy it, uh, please feel free to copy it into your files or into an email address. Um, but I'd be uh, grateful if some of you would uh, have a look at this site, if not join as a participant to see what sort of things are being discussed. Uh, it's not compulsory, you don't have to do anything. Um, but I think we do have to work together, we accountants in the world, to help create a better world. I think we do. Okay, next PowerPoint. Okay, um, some of you might be thinking, oh good, it's called the conclusion. We're nearly there. Uh, this is a plea from me to you. Let's work together uh, collaboratively towards redefining accounting for tomorrow. Why? Well, we need to have a greater understanding in the accounting profession itself of the effects of accounting in the world. And we want accounting that helps to shape a better world, not a worse world. This is a very positive presentation. I want accounting to help shape a better world. I can't ask. I can't be more complimentary of accounting. And we want heightened awareness in organisations and society, heightened. This is not just accountants need to know this, other people as well, including people in government, of the effects of accounting and how it, we, can help shape a better world. And I have published a piece in uh, a journal known as Accounting Education, uh, which you may want, want to download at some point or other, it's up to you. But I'm going to say to remember one thing, uh, if you would, uh, many voices can be heard, but silence is not platinum. If we stay silent, nothing changes in accounting. And I really want you to take this home, this little take home. And if this is the only thing you remember from this presentation, I'd like you to remember uh, what's said here. Um, don't ask what accounting can do for you. Ask yourself what you can do for accounting in shaping a better world. And if we turn to the next PowerPoint, thanks. So we're into the references now. Um, so uh, there we have the references that begin with A. Um, the next PowerPoint, please. Um, you'll see a pattern emerging here. So when you see the next PowerPoint, you'll see these start with C, fancy that. And there you'll see the authors of the uh, most recent paper published uh, just a week or so back in the Australian Accounting Review, Carnegie, Ferry, uh, Parker, Sidaway, and um, Sahodidu. And all of us were at RMIT at one point, which is why we're uh, writing together. And then the next one, next PowerPoint. And there's just a few more references on, on this one. Uh, no pattern here, D, H, and T. Um, so I hope those references uh, may turn out to be helpful. I've given you probably a bit to think about tonight. Uh, that's, that's the intention. Uh, it's to make you think. Uh, to challenge your thinking, uh, to challenge how we all uh, see, perceive, and uh, teach and research accounting. I think what we want to do is create an accounting that's better for the world. And what's better for the world is better for the flourishing of organisations, people, and nature. It might be a challenge for accounting, but I think accounting would be doing a great 
service to the world and to our planet by taking on this challenge. And I'll leave that with you. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. It's wonderful. Even I think that I have listened to this presentation maybe the third time now, but uh, every time is different, right? A little bit different because, you know, it's the, what we call is the ongoing discussion. True. The one that I listened last was by in March. Yeah. Um, yes. right. So um, let's open the floor for our questions. But do you want to have, you know, a cup of a drink for you, you know, have a rest or a couple of minutes? Uh, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm happy to keep going. Um, you know, I hope there's not, you know, 300 questions or I might have to be uh, taken taken to bed. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm happy for, for you to put, put the questions if you want to read them from the chat. I think you, you need to be the moderator of those. I'm, I'm happy to take questions, yes. Yes. So in the chat, you saw a lot, but actually they are like the translation. So, so we have the interpreter in the Zoom in another room, but we also put the translation uh, in the chat to help people yes. who want to listen yes, to yes. you. And uh, so, so from the from the questions that I can have, I only I can see that you know my. Uh, no, and my, one of our friends has uh, put together only one question, let us see. So I, I guess that it's not the question, but it's more a comment from, where is it? Uh, from Bu uh, Quốc uh, I think accounting can make the better world because the business becomes so complex that sometimes we cannot understand how our business goes. So by do accounting, we know that our business make profit or loss. Is it right? So the, the question for you that to confirm that whether we will understand correct what you have explained in an hour ago. Um, well, look, I, I think um, we can all assume the world is about business and it's about making a profit or a loss. Uh, the world's not like that. It's just not like that. Yes, there are major corporations. There are people trying to make money. Um, but there's a whole raft of organisations and entities in the world that are not doing that. And the public sector is the same. Uh, they're, not, they're not meant to be making profit. Our public universities are not to be making profit. In Australia, our public universities are charities. Uh, if I gave a donation to RMIT, uh, it's tax deductible. Entities that are for profit should not be charities. And so I think there's a more complex world out there. And I would like us to think more about trying to ensure that in operating a successful business, it's not just about profit or loss. It's about the effects of these organisations in the world, uh, whether they're sufficiently covering the costs they may be incurring upon the environment, upon humans, upon the health of humans, upon the loss of species, upon the pollution of rivers and oceans. Uh, the world's got to be seen as more complex than just everything's fine, Accounting helps organisations make a profit or a loss. I think that's too simple. And I, I fear that if we teach accounting that way, I think uh, the world's going to continue to struggle. I really do believe that. Now, I don't necessarily think you need to agree with me. You just need to think about what I've said and to see the world as a much more complex place in virtually every field of life than what it's sometimes made out to be. And I do not believe accounting is the language of business. I do not believe that. Could you please stop doing that? Is the only business done? Uh, is that the only business of accounting in the world? The language of business? No. I really think it's misleading. I think it's been written by a public relations expert 
Um, I think we need to think hard about the things we throw off the tongue that really are outdated notions that are not good for the current world in which we live. And I imagine that some of you have children or grandchildren, or you hope to, keep thinking about the world they will come into or are into. That may broaden your perspective. Or you don't have to think at all, just do what you do. It's up to you. Thank you, Gary. Um, there are two, two questions that I have here. So next like, is also a question from Bu Hui. Accounting is very important, but how to teach accounting more interesting and more accessible for the young people? My current experience about accounting is quite boring and tired. Yes, uh, I think it's very tired. Um, and I think, um, you know, to be frank, there's been little innovation in accounting for quite some time now. Now, I don't think bringing out a new accounting standard, for example, that requires the financial valuation of museum collections is, is innovative. I, I don't think it's innovative. I don't think it's a development at all. It's probably about trying to make accounting bigger and bigger and not necessarily better and better. Why do we want accounting to be bigger and bigger? Why can't accounting be better and better? These are mindsets that we can take on and think about. But I think our students would love us if we come up with an accounting that was broader, wider, and made them understand the importance and roles and impacts of accounting in the world, not just in business, which is why that term has to go. Accounting is the language of business. It has to go, full stop. And if you don't uh, perhaps accept that point, you may like to look at the uh, article in the PowerPoint, uh, Carnegie uh, 2021 in accounting education. I've actually mentioned that the very things I've said here tonight in that article in accounting education. Now, you don't have to agree with me. I'm just talking about how we can, all of us can conceive a better world through accounting. Yep. Right. Thank you, Gary. Um, the next question is from Ming Wing. Uh, there seem to be so many different accounting definitions. So how can we select the best accounting definition to teach students? Uh, I think we need a definition that's sufficiently broad, um, but also not vague. But I think we, we, uh, we, have ha happen we, we have happened to narrow up the minds of our students uh, by teaching it in the same way it has been taught for many, many years, at least a century, if not two centuries. And the students, you know, they're not necessarily switched on uh, to what accounting is doing in the world. Accounting is incredibly powerful. Think about accounting's roles in accountability and governance. But there seems to be sometimes a mindlessness about accounting. Let's just put the traditional product into non-traditional areas. That's not innovation. That's not accounting in the context in which accounting operates. People seem to have little or don't want an understanding of accounting as social practice. Um, accounting is very influential. It impacts the lives of all of us. Everyone around this session tonight is impacted by accounting. And everyone in the world, as far as I know, except perhaps people who have no connection with a workplace or an organisation or even a school, uh, they know about KPIs. They know, you know, you have to meet them. Uh, look out if you don't. And I think our accounting uh, KPIs uh, can be 
broadened considerably in the world. Yes, right. Yes. Um, so the next question I have here, quite interesting, uh, is about AI. So artificial intelligence. Um, the audience, no, just just give me a second. I open it. So the question is, do you think one day accounting will be replaced by AI computer? Uh, um, well, I I hope not because. Um... I'd just like to know who audits um, the information that's uh, contained in AI systems. Who audits that information? Can we actually trust any of it? Tell me who attests to AI uh, data. What statement do they prepare every 12 months to say, this system, this data, this whatever it is, you know, it fairly represents blah, 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 whatever. Can you tell me, is AI information verifiable? And if it's verified, if it's verifiable, is it verified in practice? Who are the auditors of AI? And until we know the answer to that question, I don't think AI can take over accounting. AI is still immature. Yeah, right. Um, I have another question from um, Hung, right? So she asked, um, no, just, just uh, as I see, um, on the definition of accounting that you just mentioned, which level, uh, which um, degree that it can be taught? So we know in Australia, accounting is taught in high school. Not yes. in Vietnam. In Vietnam, um, accounting can be taught in like TEP, right? Yep. We call it college, but it's equivalent to TEP in Australia. In bachelor degree, so undergraduate, master graduate, uh, master the postgraduate, uh, and also PhD when they do the research. So in your opinion, uh, the definition, uh, the new definition, can it be taught in which level? Uh, all of them. Okay. All of them. Yes, I think I think all of them. I think um, I think we have created, you know, as I said before, a whole generation of, of people, if not more than one generation of people who think accounting is the doing of accounting, that accounting is accounts. And then you put together the financial statements. Uh, but accounting just doesn't sit there like an ornament on a shelf. You can see I've got a lovely plate here um, from Portugal. Um, that's not accounting. Accounting doesn't sit on a shelf and say, look at me, I, don't I look great? That's not accounting, It's not an ornament. That plate can help me eat, but it doesn't do anything. It just sits there and looks at me. So accounting makes us eat and it changes uh, the way we look, the way we act the way we treat each other. It changes human behavior and it impacts on organizational and social world culture. Uh, we need to know that at every level. Right. Thank you, Gary. Um, the next question is from Hui. I want to explore your comment on making accounting bigger and bigger. Do you mean that we should give values on numbers to the moral and ethical perspectives of organization. No, I don't. I, I don't um, uh, believe that's what I'm talking about because I think accountants need to understand that some things in the world have value, but they're not financial value, and certain assets are in the world and put in certain sorts of institutions to be taken away from the economics of the marketplace, such as the collections of uh, public museums. So these resources are highly valuable. They're prized, but they have no financial value. They've been removed legally, 
and under the constitutions of the entities that uh, are custodians, they're being removed from the economics of the marketplace. And so these resources uh, don't have to be valued at all, but they're valued in non-financial terms. And heritage professionals have means of value using terms, uh, phrases, you know, all sorts of words and terms to give value to things that are very important. And I don't mean accounting can, uh, can take on a project accounting for love or accounting for happiness. I don't, I don't believe in that ever either. Uh, but I think a, a number of people have wanted accounting to be better and better. That's not my view. My view is I want accounting to be better and better. Thank you, Gary. Uh, the next question I have here is from Wing Lin. How can administrators and society appreciate the role of accountants through the income paid to the accountants in Vietnam? I see that they do not appreciate the roles of accountants. So she indicated that potentially accountants are underpaid in Vietnam. Oh, look, I, I could imagine uh, that could very well be the case. Um, um, you know, I think that'll probably change. I do, I do think Vietnam is, is going well uh, as a country. I've been there many times. Um, you know, I think um, wages uh, will eventually increase. But I think accountants who see accounting as technical, social and moral practice are better equipped for what I think the world needs than those that are good at numbers. And I also don't believe you have to be good at maths to be a good accounting student. Correct, I agree with you. Uh, so is there, so this question is from Wing Hang. Is there any standards or techniques related to moral practices and social practices to answer the questions what does a cow, I'm not sure is accounting or accountants do, and what should accountants do or do not? And what should accountants do or don't? Well, I think we just need to open our minds to what does accounting do. Um, you know, I think we need to uh, think a lot more about that. But when the uh, um, cultural institutions in New Zealand valued their collection, collection such as the National Library of New Zealand, they had no idea, no idea that the government wanted to apply a capital charge of 10% per annum. That's incredibly sneaky. That's incredibly uh, archaic. Uh, it seems to be a mission to uh, decrease the size of the public sector or decrease the importance of the public sector. And all I can say is accounting was part of that. Accounting was part of that idea. I know people, accounting professors, who advised for this to happen. I know them personally. I think if accounting wants something done, or if the government wants to use accounting in some way, we need to know about it. Shocks are out. We don't need shocks caused by accounting. So we need to just think quite differently about accounting. Now, if this is too hard, if there's not a book you can buy tomorrow on it, then you might not be ready for this cause. But I think we need to think beyond, oh, can this be feasible? Yes, it can be. We need to work out how to make it happen. And I think the aim is for the betterment of the world, not just for the benefit of accounting and accountants. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. So the next question is coming from your answer. So you gave three that new definition, accounting as um, technical, social and moral practices. So the question is technical practice, it can be audited. But how about social and moral practices? 
can they can can they be audited by accounting firm such as big four or non big four accounting firm? Well, look, I think we need to see a, a big picture here. Um, I don't want to be controversial here, but we know there's troubles at the moment in the in the Eastern Europe, and there's a country there which was um, apparently invaded. Uh, well, that's the term that I've heard, and we know there's been some sort of war or battles uh, going on there. Uh, but I wonder how many people think attending tonight that the country which invaded the other one was in the right? Or was it that the country that wasn't uh, invading anybody but was invaded was in the right? I think the world typically has pretty clear views on this. I think when you see something going on that's not right or it's completely wrong or it's dodgy or it's unethical or if it's illegal, most people tend to pick that up. You know, they we accept the fact that that's not right. We don't want that. I think it's easier to determine what's moral than we think. Uh, what's moral is what collectively we believe is, is the right thing to happen here. And that's the right thing in an ethical sense. And as far as social practice is concerned, we have to see accounting as changing the world. It's an instrument of power. It's an instrument of change. I'm not saying it's a bad instrument. I'm not saying we don't need it. But we need to see accounting as changing things in the world and whether that's what the world needs is another issue. Now we hear about um, climate change. Uh, we hear all sorts of forecasts about that. I would like to know how we can use accounting in the world so as to help countries and organisations actually meet new targets for greenhouse emissions and so on and so forth. I, I think this is accountants just thinking differently. But you can't think differently if you think accounting is just a technical practice and once you do it, it's done, that's it. Nothing happens. Because that's not accounting as I know it. So why do we define it differently? That alone is a very important question. It's probably a top research question. Why is accounting defined as it is in the world? It's, it'd be a very big PhD. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so calling for a PhD research proposal. Anyone in the Zoom? <laughs> you will be supervised by Professor Gary Kennedy. Yes, well, I won't, I won't say yes to that, but uh, it's, um, these are things that could be done. I'm not saying do it, but um, I think we can think differently. I think the world needs different thinking accountants. And I'm suggesting with two other colleagues, a definition that could be used to broaden our mindsets, to help see accounting for what it is and what it does and its importance in the world and then to be able to benefit not just profit entities, uh, but all organisations, profit or non-profit, public or private, voluntary or uh, military, and so on. Um, I, think, I think we just need to think more broadly. And when we've got a broader mind, uh, we can have a broader vision. True. I agree with you. Right. Um, so um, the next question is, how is the accounting beneficial for me as an individual? Uh, could you just say that again? I missed oh, the last bit. Let's, let's I translate. So the, the original question is, how is the accounting beneficial for me as an individual? So I guess as, that the as question an individual. Is, yeah. Well, as, well, I don't, I don't know, but I know there are people who keep um, 
you know, budgets at home yeah. of expenses. Um, and that's accounting. If you prepare a written budget, uh, that's accounting. And I know people, um, you know, collect receipts to do bank reconciliations. Uh, that's a control issue, which is part of accounting. Uh, I think everyone in the world does accounting, but everyone's impacted by accounting. You're impacted by KPIs you don't know exist, but the people behind the counter or coming up to you in the, uh, the theatre to guide you to your seat, they have KPIs. And so KPIs are impacting the service you get, the quality of your service, uh, the number of times you get the service, where you get the service, and whether you're standing or sitting. Accounting and KPIs are influencing all of those decisions or actions. Accounting is impacting on all of us every minute of the day, wherever we go. And we don't think about it, but accounting is a social practice. It's through accounting that we actually create some sort of guidance and ordering in the world. Yep. Accounting right. is not just for someone to make a decision about. We have to think well past what the decision was and how that will impact once it's implemented. Thank you, Gary. I think this next question is close to your heart. <laughs> you, you have been with Accounting History Journal for 25 years, correct? Yes. Yes, right. So you started as a, a member of editorial board then you have you were you were a uh, chief i think editor in chief for like more than 10 years yes something like yes. that yeah and then now you um even you know you retire you you are still working there as a consultant for the for the history accounting history journal so you you're part of the journal right so the question here um the member asked what is your inspiration for the accounting history journal, oh. um, is it uh, what is your mission? Is it mission link? Is its mission linked to the way you treat accounting as social practice? Uh, well, they're, they're very big questions, but I think um, I think I I went into accounting history because um, you know accounting does have a history, and it's not as if it doesn't matter. Um, once I was walking along the street, I think it was in uh, somewhere in Finland, uh, Turku, I think. And someone said to me, uh, a young woman was walking along the uh, street with me and says, oh, what research do you do? And I said, oh, accounting history. And she said, why accounting history? And so uh, ever since that day, I've had reasons as to why accounting history is important but for anyone in accounting who thinks the history of accounting is not important I would say that's a very strange way to think because in all walks of life our history is important uh, a lot of us want to do our family history we want to know where we came from uh, we want to know things like, why did we go to that uh, preschool why did we go to that primary school why did we go to that secondary school um, there's a lot in our past that we don't know about. A great deal we don't know about, but it's probably all impacted on the shape of us as people. And the same thing for accounting. There's a lot in the past of accounting that has all helped to shape on accounting and helped produce the accounting we do today. If we know nothing of the foundations of accounting we do today, I don't think we can have this sort of discussion about changing to a different future for accounting because accounting will be seen as timeless, unable to be changed, unnecessary to be changed. The world needs accounting as we've had it forever. Uh, that's not my view of the world. Thank you, Gary. Um, the next question is, what made you choose accounting as your academic and research area, what makes you fall in love with accounting? <laughs> uh, look, I think it's a very simple answer. Uh, 
in my family, um, there was one family member who became a uh, professional accountant. Uh, he's a lot older than me. He's still alive. He's still um, practicing. He's, he's quite old, but he's practicing. And um, the family seemed to think he was successful. Mm. And I'd never studied accountant. I didn't really know what it was. Um, but I thought, well, if Uncle Billy or whatever is uh, successful, that, that could be a good thing for me. Um, and uh, a couple of other uh, family members became accountants as well, possibly for the same reason. And so I have a very simple reason as to why I became an accountant. I worked in practice for a decade and became an academic just before I turned 30. Um, so I have been in practice uh, for many years as well. Uh, but that's enough of me, uh, but that's, that's a short answer. <laughs> so you love accounting because uh, Uncle Billy, I'm surprised yeah, well, it's your uncle. We'll say Uncle Billy. He has a real name, but that's not his real name. But he's your uncle. Yes. He's not brother, but it's his real, your real uncle. He is, yes. Oh, oh, and he's still practicing as accountant. He is. He's very, very serious uh, accountant, yes. Wow. He must love accounting so much. <laughs> right. But I think, um, I, think, um, I think some people are a bit derogatory of accounting, but the way I talk about accounting is to see accounting as really highly important and highly influential in the world. Yeah. The fact that I see it and other people see it as a technical, social and moral practice, I think is an advantage because then we can do more with accounting change to help create a better world. And I'll say it again, to enable organisations, people and nature to flourish. Uh, why wouldn't we try that? Why wouldn't we want that to happen? I can't think of why the world wouldn't want that. Excellent. Thank you, Gary. Um, I finished all the questions that the, the members sent to us. So maybe I open the floor for any one or two questions, last question that you want to ask Gary directly. So uh, you are able to unmute yourself now. Anyone you just, oh, Bing is, Bing is here. I didn't see it, but she, uh, Bing Boy from Macquarie University. Yes. Hey, Bing. <laughs> nice to have you here. Hey, you are muted, Bing. Just unmute. Oh, Gary, I just want to drop in to, I did raise my hand earlier, but there's so many questions. Uh, I must say I'm very inspired by your, your talk. Sorry, I lost my voice since I have COVID. <laughs> so I escaped about two years to hear him. Now I got a couple of comments to make. Um, uh, so the, the example you used with the New Zealand Library, uh, we have a similar example in, in Vietnam. So um, a few years ago, the Vietnamese National um, um, Filmmaking or Television Agency or um, and the government uh, decided to evaluate value is assets. And um, what is really funny is, of course, you know, for a developing country as Vietnam, all those old movies really mean little. It may mean, you know, a little bit to people who are in their 60s and 70s, but mean absolutely nothing to younger generations who are all about TikToks and YouTube. Um, so it basically is actually a very, a very small amount, I think even negative on the balance sheet. And as a result, um, the government sell it off to a, what they call a strategic partner. But yes. what that strategic partner did is they didn't do anything to invest in the further filmmaking, but they actually rented out for like restaurants and cafes because that's the way they make money. Yes. But so there's a danger, a serious danger, if you know Vietnamese academics and students really look out for the real impact of accounting is if you're not careful, accounting is used as a tool for serious destruction of, mm. of you know, um, well-being um, values by trying to quantify. So I totally agree with you. Things that, certain things can simply not quantify because when you try to quantify, it actually gives the weapon to somebody try to sell it off or compare yes. it 
against something else. You just have yes. to accept it as priceless. Yes, I agree. Now, that mm. very word you used, I'm glad you used it because I was going to bring it up later. But mm. all around the world, and I've read uh, many, many articles on museums and their collections, but they are known as priceless. They are commonly known as prices. And I'd just like to ask the people attending, are auditors superhumans? Because if collections are priceless, then how can you put a price on them anyway? And how can you audit a priceless collection with a price on it? It's not possible. And so I think for the benefit of accounting, this would be an area where auditors stand back and say, too hard, impossible. We're not superhuman. Uh, we're not superwoman or superman. Uh, sorry, uh, we're not doing that. And that would be an appropriate thing to do. But it's not being done. And that's my concern. Yeah, it's not easy because you never knew what the government, as you say, you know, accountants and auditors may be commissioned to do some things and they don't actually know what is the intention of the government um, or the yes. ones who they are there to do that. And the thing is, they may don't do anything to it. And a few years later, they will use that for some other purpose for as part of privatization or something. You know, there's always something going on. Um, the second comment I want to make is um, social environmental accounting is also on the rise in Vietnam. Yes. Basically we have a lot of uh, environmental crisis and disaster going on. Um, so in terms of how to make accounting to address um, and be um, to hold business really accountable for their social environmental impact, um, I think there's a lot of scope be done and I realize your idea of how how accounting can have to change or shape the better world as we know the IPCC has result um, has released the most recent um, report saying how urgent um, mm. and how little um, actually how little progress we have made, but also how little time we have left in addressing all this. Um, so part of the, the project I'm doing and other people doing is really to hold organizations accountable towards the, the real uh, progress they make towards meeting those 1.5 targets. Agreed. Yes, agree. And I find it's really funny how the government has talked at the national levels, but we actually haven't. So there's a lot of a lot of work on national accounting level for climate change, but really little at organizational sector level and say how they can contribute to those targets because yes. you can't achieve these uh, lofty uh, targets without actually go down to organizational and individual level even. And then, and I, um, and as you talk, I was really uh, motivated to think of, you know, like we talk about accounting as double bookkeeping, right? And we have to extend it beyond just a debit and credit of financial number. We can think simply, okay, so if accounting really have an impact, so every time I buy something, right? And I want to keep a, a budget or a book for my personal purpose, or the same way applies to organization. When I enter the money I paid, for the item, the other next to it, the debit and credit will be, what is the impact of the amount I made? What is the emissions of that? What is the social impact of that? They won't be able to develop like simple tools for that kind of social environmental bookkeeping to happen and integrate it together with the normal bookkeeping that we are doing for accounting. Just some yes. idea. Yeah. Yes, look, um, I, I think um, this is a big challenge. Uh, for accounting, but how many accountants do we have in the world? Like, we have a lot, right? And we just need people to think differently about accounting, which is why this definition's being pushed. Uh, it's it's not you know just a nice set of words. It's it's meant to change the way we view accounting and the way accounting is seen and what it does in the world. And the whole idea is to shape a better world. So I can only see positives here. And if anyone feels a little bit concerned or threatened that this is not suitable, uh, well, I, I apologise, but um, the world, I think, has to move to a different place. And I think accounting needs to help take it there. 
Um, but it's going to take a while, but we haven't got too long to waste. Okay, I'm just looking at the time, Ben. Um, I might have to wrap it up now. Is there a final question? Not Ben, um, look. Look, okay. Uh, I think the final question here is, uh, let's, let's say, the. I think the cases that Professor Gary and Dr. Bing share are similar to the case of rebuilding the, the Notre Dame Cathedral in France. It cost the French government tons of money, but they still do it because, it's, it, because of its heritage and icon. Is it correct? It is correct. Um, you know, I think when we protect our, our artifacts or our, our Notre Dame, we're actually paying respect to past civilizations who help create the world we we are in today. And I think as respect to them, we we do try to preserve their their major artifacts uh, as you know a token of appreciation and also for education and understanding and hopefully more tolerance in the world. And the other thing I'll say about museums is I, I watched very carefully the Ukrainian people uh, take artifacts out of their museums because they were concerned that they would be bombed or just simply destroyed and moved them to a secret location. I don't know where that is, um, meant to be secret because they don't want to lose their artifacts. They're, they're, they're objects that have been part of their growing up as a country. They're very special. There's no financial value. There's no uh, cost benefit analysis you could do on that shift. It's just non-negotiable. It has to happen. So on that note, I'll, I will close. And I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. I can now see some faces, which is a little bit more interesting to me. I did see a, a number of photos and I, I've seen a lot of names, uh, but the faces are, are real and uh, it's good to see the real faces and I can see uh, some smiling now and it makes me believe I'm in the real world and not just a computer. Thank you. All right. So everyone, can we please turn on the camera we are that we are able to take a group photo? Uh, together before we say goodbye to Professor Gary Kennedy. Yes, all right. all right. I should, I forgot, I should do it from the beginning, yeah, when we have over 100 uh, members. Oh, it, I see. It's, yeah, it's either a nice surprise to me because <laughs> I didn't receive many uh, registration at all. I do worry a bit. <laughs> But you know the turnout is is really good. So yeah. well, it's been a very good turnout, and and I'd like you please try to be proactive. Uh, you can completely forget what you heard tonight, but I would much rather you be proactive, and work with many other people, including Bin there and other people all around the world, who really want accounting to do better. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Gary. Um, right. Um, so everyone, you are able to turn on the mic now. If you want to just, you know, um, maybe together with me, say thank you to Gary. And have a good night, Gary. Have a happy thank you. Easter. All right. And, and, and thank you very much for the invitation. Thank and Thank you, you for tuning in. Uh, all right, okay. Everyone. All the best. See you. Enjoy your break. Bye-bye. Have a good night, bye Gary. Bye-bye. you. Yes. All right. Uh, cảm ơn cả nhà. <cười> không, không nghĩ là lên đông như vậy. Không ai đăng ký hết mà. <cười> Trời à, Lúc mà Gary hỏi Đức hả? Đức ơi, bao nhiêu người đăng ký? Không dám nói thiệt luôn. <cười> Tại vì hình như có mấy cái phiếu đăng ký là chưa tới 10 cái nữa. <cười> rồi. Cảm ơn bạn Khoa, bạn My. À, ủa mi còn đây không mi đâu rồi mi ơi em đâu rồi cảm ơn chị tùng à, cảm ơn ngọc anh những bạn tình nguyện viên yêu thương của nhịp cầu trí thức à, đã giúp cho cái buổi này 
à, successful ha khoa hả đúng không <cười> lần đầu tiên được làm chuyên đề về kế toán rồi, mọi người có thể mở mic được á mình rồi trong đây tất cả mọi người có ai là không làm kế toán mà tại vì thấy tự dưng tò mò chui vô không <cười> Các chị này chứ à, Chị Tùng hả? À? Chị là vô làm nhiệm vụ Không phải tò mò Không phải tò mò Cũng muốn nghe Nhưng mà quả thật là Cái bài bài trình bày của ông ấy Thay đổi hẳn quan điểm Cũng như cách hiểu của chị về kế toán á yeah. Chứ bao giờ chị nghĩ đến chuyện kế toán Nó sẽ liên quan đến những cái vấn đề Về uh, giá trị Hay là những cái vấn đề xã hội Môi trường chẳng hạn yeah. Hoặc là những cái vấn đề toàn cầu khác À, đúng là có có nhiều cái có nhiều cái định nghĩa rất là khác đúng không? Mà đâu phải kế toán chỉ có nợ có và những con số đúng không mọi người? Yeah. À, rồi à, có ai muốn chia sẻ gì nữa không trước khi mình tạm biệt nhau nè? Ồ à, Bùi Quốc Hy không phải ngành kế toán hôm nay là bạn Bùi Quốc Hy là được à, sẽ được trao bằng khen nhé. Tại vì những câu hỏi nhờ những câu hỏi của bạn mà mình giữ được bạn vượng Huy cho tới cho đến Gary đến 9 giờ Rồi cảm ơn Huy rất là nhiều, Huy ngành nào vậy em? À, ngành tài chính thôi, thôi cũng gần gần Rồi, à, rồi hy vọng là mọi người đã có một cái buổi học, à, một cái buổi à, bổ ích à, Dù là dân kế toán hay không, nhưng mà à, chắc là nghe cũng à, à, được nhiều cái gọi là có những cái ý tưởng mới và sẽ không nghĩ rằng là kế toán là à, là những con số khô khan nữa đúng không? Nhất là anh phiên dịch viên của chúng ta. <cười> à, Khoa, sao em? <cười> Hằng thì cũng nói, Hằng với chị là cùng cùng dân kế toán rồi. Sao Khoa? <cười> Khoa ơi, em, em bỏ tiếng Việt đi Khoa. Em bỏ chị, chị đóng cái chị đóng cái interpretation đi Khoa. Ủa nhưng mà chị đóng không được, chị đâu phải host đâu. Ngọc Anh, <cười> Ngọc Anh trả host lại cho chị. <cười> đâu rồi? <cười> Ngọc Anh đóng cái... Uh... Ngọc Anh ơi, em đóng cái... Uh... Để chị lấy lại cho. Để sao chị lấy ta? Reclaim host. Ok. Ồ yeah. oh, rồi, bạn lấy rồi. Rồi, Ngọc Anh. À, khoa nè. Alo, các chị nghe em nói đúng không ạ? Bây giờ mới nghe, hồi nãy giờ không nghe gì hết. À. À. Em uh, phải rất là cảm ơn uh, các chị trong team dịch Tại vì uh, nếu như không phải là các chị giúp đỡ Thì chắc là em cũng không vượt qua được cái uh, sự kiện này Khó quá hả? Uh, thực ra thì có một vài cái phần ví dụ cụ thể Về cái thư viện ở New Zealand Và cái uh, cái gì đó Cái, cái ví dụ là nó đi sâu hơn chị còn những cái phần mà thầy trao đổi về những cái định nghĩa của kế toán với lại những cái ví dụ về môi trường á, thì em nghĩ là em làm được không mất nhiều thông tin phần câu hỏi thì em cũng làm em nghĩ là em làm ổn trừ phần của cô bình <cười> tại bình nói nhanh quá đúng không <cười> cô bình vào một cái em chạy không kịp <cười> đó là lúc lúc mà đọc câu hỏi là chị đức đọc rất là chậm cho em đúng không có dừng thành ra là <cười> rồi không sao em chắc là em cũng không cần dịch cái cái câu hỏi đó không biết mình còn không chắc là bình ra rồi à. rồi bình thì chuyên gia nói nhanh <cười> mà lại nói thuật ngữ nữa là em làm làm thông dịch viên khoa <cười> bó tay luôn phần phần bó đó phần đó là em phải công nhận là em đã bỏ sót rất nhiều thông tin phần của cô mình rồi ừ. yeah. lúc đó hằng không chạy vô cứu em à, tại vì em đang ở bên phòng uh, zoom của tiếng anh chị thì lúc em phải à. chỉnh slide nên em chuyển hẳn sang phòng tiếng anh rồi à, rồi rồi, <cười> rồi à, rồi rồi thôi mình à, thằng có muốn nói gì chia sẻ gì trước khi mình chia tay với nhau không ừ. à, cũng không có gì đâu ạ. em chỉ muốn gửi lời cảm ơn tới chị Đức và Khoa cũng như Mi đã cho em cơ hội làm việc cùng mọi người trong tuần vừa rồi ạ. cảm ơn tất cả các bạn đã ở lại tới thời điểm này được à, chúc mọi người ngày nghỉ cuối tuần vui vẻ
mai thứ sáu mà chị chưa cuối tuần à, ừ tại vì bên úc ngày mai là easter rồi ồ nên bọn chị à, là hồi đây rồi à, à dạ. hôm nay là coi như là là, là một năm á là kỳ nghỉ ngày mai là thậm chí còn nhiều hơn christmas đó em tại christmas à. được có hai ngày à trong khi easter được tới bốn ngày lận à là um, um, là không được ở à, đúng rồi được friday nè uh, saturday sunday monday and tuesday À, là cái kỳ kỳ nghỉ Easter này à, cũng tương đương với kỳ nghỉ Giáng sinh á. Ừ. Rồi, chia, chúng mình chia tay nha. Cảm ơn các bạn. Hẹn gặp lại các bạn vào webinar hai tuần nữa. À, à, sẽ có một cái à, sẽ có một cái symposium à, medical khoa ơi. <cười> lọc máu nhân tạo, lọc máu à, lọc 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 máu thận. nhân tạo anh như là về về liên quan đến thận đúng không chị em có đúng rồi xem. thận à, thực ra là intelligent renal care là tiếng bên google nó gọi là gì à, chăm sóc thận à, thông minh nhưng mà thực ra là dịch trật google dịch trật chị hỏi yeah. anh tuyển anh tuyển kêu là lọc máu nhân tạo cái đó cái đó chị nói đùa thôi em không phải dịch đâu yeah. thực ra những cái đó em không dám dịch <cười> cái đó tất cả những bạn nào muốn muốn tham dự là phải một trăm phần trăm tiếng anh sẽ không có à, nhu cầu dinh thức sẽ không dám đảm bảo thông dịch viên cho các bạn yeah. Yeah. <cười> rồi ba à, tháng 4 ha rồi thôi chào mọi người cảm ơn mọi người rất là nhiều rồi, à, em chào dạ, chị cảm, ơn, cảm ơn chị đức nhiều cảm ơn các anh chị ừ. rồi xin chào Tắt recording nha.